inflation. Now, inflation has risen worldwide. And while prices increase, income remains stagnant for most. So as expected, families are feeling the crunch in their pockets and bank accounts. And unfortunately, as the crisis persists, consumers will more than likely have to deal with higher prices for much longer than expected. And while we are hopeful for the economy to get back to normal, we have to find a way to manage the increase until that happens. And that's what this video is about. Today, I will be sharing 20 practical ways in which you can save money and spend less while living on a dime, regardless of where you are in the world. Now, of course, I live in Montego Bay, so some of the focus is going to be on Montego Bay. Stay tuned for the entire video because I will also be doing some price comparisons. Alright, give me the all purpose then. Wait, you have hand wash? Okay, alright, so bleach in this. And the soap in this. Oh, you saw it. Five fifty for the gallon, which okay. And the bleach here is a hundred and something. Oh, okay, all right. So a gallon of bleach at a bulk store costs $150, while a gallon of bleach at a supermarket costs anywhere from $586.61 to $926. Now this is of course depending on the brand. Rocks is 926 for 3.78 liters, one gallon of Lorax. Now that saves you between $436.61 and $776 at every purchase, assuming that the bulk bleach is of equal value or quality. The Chlorado is $720 and the Hilo branded one 3.8 liters is $511.67. Also, a gallon of hand soap at a bulk store is $550 when that is the price you would pay on average for a bottle of hand soap at a supermarket or really any other store. Six, four, 71, 638, 531. And this is like 7.5 flow and sort of 221 milliliters. That means you can get 17 of these bottles from the gallon. Buying in bulk is probably the most shared tip for spending less. Items that you use regularly should be bought in bulk. More often than not, these items will work out cheaper per unit. For example, a pack of 24 tissues costs $1,400 before GCT, that's $58.33 per tissue. However, buying a single tissue of the same brand would cost $68. In this case, buying in bulk saves you roughly $10 per unit. Some items that you can purchase in bulk include tissue, paper towel, cooking oil, toothpaste, shampoo, hand soap, laundry detergent, etc. When buying in bulk, you should consider the likelihood that having more products on hand may cause an increase in your pattern of consumption. Now you can combat this by putting the excess away. For example, if you normally use one bottle of hand soap for the month, then you should put the excess away and only refill the bottle once per month. In addition, take note of expiration dates so that you don't end up with a lot of expired items on hand or having to eat as much as you can so they don't go to waste, essentially doing the opposite of saving money. I would also like to add that apart from saving you money buying in bulk, helps to reduce waste as it eliminates the need for excessive packaging and single-use plastic. If you're buying a gallon of bleach, for example, you bring your own bottle to refill on every purchase. You may also write the date you bought the items on the product so that you can track how long they last. There are two places you can do your bulk shopping. You can do it at a bulk store and at a wholesale. 
at the bulk store you can get your bleach detergent fabric softener hand soap etc and at the wholesale you can get tissue oil and other food items limit how often you go grocery shopping if you go grocery shopping every week you will actually end up spending more than if you go once per month or twice per month now this is because of the additional travel cost as well as the added temptation and impulse to buy what's not needed you know that the moment you're going to the supermarket you are going to be tempted to buy something that you really don't need but you really want so limit how often you go to the supermarket in any case remember gas price and taxi fare gone up so number three write a supermarket list creating a weekly or monthly meal plan and using that as a basis to create your grocery list can be a great place to start always write a list when going to the supermarket and another important tip is remembering that you created a list when you get to the supermarket because sometimes your girl forgets anyways working out what items are needed before going to the supermarket should help you keep your spending down well this is as long as you stick to the list and to prevent you from going off on a tangent just bring only the amount of money you will need to purchase the listed items i know most of us like to have our debit and credit cards with us whenever we shop but sometimes having easy access to money means that you will spend more so leave your cards at home if you know that you'll be tempted to overspend now once you have built up tolerance and you are able to withstand temptation you can bring them along buy grown provisions and fruits at the market rather than the supermarket now here are some price comparisons this one kind of hit me for six the price for carrot per pound is listed as $350 at the supermarket, but in the market, it was $100 per pound. Then cabbage was $210 per pound in the supermarket. And the sweet, sweet melon at the supermarket is $240 per pound while at the market it was 200 per pound now this one not too bad you should also purchase meat at the meat shop instead of the supermarket now for example chicken breasts at a supermarket may cost you 350 dollars per pound whereas at a meat shop i paid 300 dollars per pound now check out these fish prices and compare them to what you pay at a supermarket. This fish price is this. Let me know in the comments if you pay more or less. Buy the grocery store brands. They are usually much cheaper. Now let's backtrack a bit to number one. When I showed you the prices of the different bleaches in the supermarket, did you notice that the Hilo branded bleach costs the least? The Chlorado is $7.20 and the Hilo branded one, 3.8 liters is $511.67. make a budget we've all heard about how important it is to create a budget but how many of us actually do it and do it consistently very few i would think but creating a budget is an essential first step to start spending wisely it helps us to balance our expenses and income while we plan wisely how we will spend our money do you create a budget and stick to it limit wastage cook just enough for your family and if there are any leftovers place it in the fridge for another day and another meal reuse and recycle let's talk about water water is an essential resource and unfortunately many people do not do enough to ensure that they use it wisely 
everyone and i mean everyone should try to cultivate water saving habits you can start by washing your dishes in a container rather than just having the tap running fill a glass with water when brushing your teeth do full loads of laundry and dishes fix leaks reuse water used for rinsing to water certain plants and set up a water catchment system to supplement your water supply you realize that the dog cheering me on in my grito. Don't change out your phones and other gadgets every year. I mean, if it's broken, fine. But changing to a shinier, newer model, which lacks any discernible upgrade, is a waste of time. Stop falling for their marketing tricks. Any meaningful upgrade will more than likely take place every few years, not every year. Learn these credit card tricks and best practices. Pay your credit card bill in full and on time to avoid interest payments and late fee. Then do not place anything on your card until after your billing or statement date passes. This means that whatever you place on your card after the billing date will come on your next statement and will be due at the end of that month. Let's say, for example, your bill date is the 10th of every month. When the 10th of February passes, you can go ahead and begin making purchases again. Whatever you place on the card will come on your next statement on the 10th of March and will become due either at the end of March or early in April, depending on the length of your billing period. Anything that I want to purchase close to my bill date, especially if it's a big purchase, I leave until after the 10th so that it will come on the next bill, essentially giving me more time to pay. You can also get a credit card that gives you cash back on purchases or airline miles or airline points. In addition, remember that credit cards usually attract a higher interest rate. So consider consolidating your credit card debt. The interest rate on a personal loan should be much lower. Use cash instead of your credit card. Yep, that's what I said. This will force you to give more thought to your purchases. In addition, having to count out your money when paying will make you realize quite quickly how much you are really spending. Now, of course, not everyone will want to use cash. Many people feel safer with their credit cards than walking around with a wad of cash, and that's understandable. So do what you find more comfortable. Convenience can be a killer. So probably you need to cut down on the online shopping and delete all your billing information. Having to put it in every time you want to make a purchase will give you time to reconsider. Plus it ought to be hella annoying. <laughs> Credit card information stored on these apps make it way too easy for you to shop. So delete them. Now, Jamaicans have a tendency of giving their house a new coat of paint every Christmas, but you can scrub and wash your walls instead of always buying new paints. You can easily wash walls within the house that may have become grimy throughout the year. So, consider that one as another option. Eat at home. For many, a good percentage of their income is spent on food and that percentage increases when you mostly eat out. During 2020, many realized how much money they saved by not eating out all the time and being forced to eat at home. Eating out may be enticing because of the experience and the convenience because sometimes you just don't want to go in front of a hot stove. Yeah, me either. Having quick meal options that require less cooking, like freezer meals that you can do once a month can help, or meals that take only five minutes or so to prepare. You may also learn some new recipes for your favorite restaurant meals so that you can fill that craving for something different when you want it. Bundle cable and internet service if you can. 
Changing your cable package can help you save money, but always do the math to ensure that you are actually getting value for money. For example, Flow has different bundle options. Compare them with your current plan to see which one will save you more. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions. If you're not using the subscription regularly, then you need to uncheck that auto renew button like I did for Netflix in 2020. Moving on. You more than likely can make some energy conservation changes to decrease your electricity bill at the end of the month. Don't leave appliances plugged in if you're not using them. That one is obvious. Unplug your chargers, turn off your lights when not in use, turn the AC off and let the fan circulate the cool air. Take advantage of your location. You're living in beautiful sunny Jamaica. So dry your clothes on a line, not in the dryer. Use LED bulbs for lighting. Don't allow the buildup of ice in your refrigerator and iron once a week. These are a few of the minor changes that you can implement that will greatly decrease your light bill. Make your savings automatic. This is where a specific amount is automatically deducted from your account every month and automatically transferred to your savings. An important adjunct to this is not linking the savings account to a debit card because you know you're going to get tempted to make a withdrawal if the funds are easily accessible. So don't do that if you really plan on saving. Grow what you eat and eat what you grow. Backyard gardening can really help to supplement your diet. Plant onions, escalions, peas, beans, tomatoes, garlic, scotch bunny pepper, cabbage, lettuce, etc. Plant items that are generally more expensive or that you use often. Your produce can be planted in your yard or in containers if you don't have enough land space. Lettuce, kale and spinach are considered fast growers so you can start with those. You can buy seeds at Agro Grace, out at Fairview. Oh, I didn't know y'all had seedlings here too. They got seedlings here too. Oh my gosh, Pak Chow. And you can also purchase seeds and seedlings at the Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA. These 20 practical money-saving tips can work wherever you are, and I hope you found them useful. If you want to know how or where to get a taxi when you're in Montego Bay, from budget-friendly to convenient ways of traveling, watch this next video.